Hey, my name is Lior Bibas and I am a cardiology fellow at McGill University in Montreal, Canada. Before starting, I'd like to thank Jade Chenarrois from University Laval for designing all the graphics. Welcome to our EKG tutorial. We will be addressing in the next few videos ischemia and infarction on the electrocardiogram. So the objectives of this section are 1. Define acute coronary syndromes and distinguish unstable angina and non-ST elevation myocardial infarction from ST elevation myocardial infarction or STEMI. 2. Recognize ischemia and infarction on the EKG. 3. Localize ischemia and infarction within a coronary territory. Acute coronary syndromes are encountered on a daily basis in the emergency room. Prompt diagnosis of ischemia on EKG may lead to proper management and may actually save lives. We will really focus on understanding the changes on EKG in patients presenting with ACS. We will not be discussing management in this series of videos. Before understanding the ECG manifestations of ACS, let's first go over pathophysiology of acute coronary syndrome. Acute coronary syndromes represent a spectrum of myocardial ischemia. Clinically, the spectrum extends from unstable angina and NSTEMI all the way to STEMI. What they have in common is their pathophysiology. Acute coronary syndromes are caused by an acute rupture of a coronary plaque with subsequent thrombus formation. Here is a section of a normal coronary with its three layers, the intima, the media, and the adventitia. With age and other risk factors, such as high cholesterol, hypertension, smoking, diabetes, a positive family history or genetic predisposition, coronary artery disease may develop with atherosclerotic plaque formation. These atherosclerotic plaques develop over years and are composed of macrophages and lipids. Some plaques may also be calcified. Over time, a plaque may progressively narrow the lumen without provoking any symptoms, seeing as the lumen remains for the most part patent. Acute coronary syndromes are caused by an acute rupture of a long-standing coronary plaque with subsequent thrombus formation and acute subtotal or total occlusion of the coronary artery. When the plaque ruptures or ulcerates, a cascade is triggered with platelet activation and the activation of the coagulation cascade. The resulting acute narrowing of the lumen by thrombus will cause myocardial ischemia. Patients complain classically of pressure-like chest pain radiating to the arms, the neck, or the back, often accompanied with shortness of breath, nausea, and or diaphoresis. ACS is a clinical spectrum extending from unstable angina and NSTEMI all the way to STEMI. On one hand, unstable angina and NSTEMI are due to subendocardial myocardial ischemia caused by an incomplete blockage of an artery by the thrombus. STEMIs, on the other hand, are caused by a complete occlusion of an artery by a thrombus and subsequent transmural infarction. We will be discussing these in further detail later, but first let's discuss the coronary anatomy and how to localize ischemia on an EKG.